Hello everyone, it's me, Aaron Professor Thorgy, your guide to all things geeky, and welcome to another episode of Comic Class, a show every single week on this channel where we just geek out about comic books. And you know, today's episode is an episode I've been wanting to do for the longest time. However, every single week, there's some brand new thing in the world of comic books that I need to talk about, so I've been waiting for the longest time for there to finally be a quiet week where nothing is being announced. for a quiet week where nothing is being announced so I can finally talk about this. By the way, Marvel, I swear to God, if you announce what the hell this weird teaser is sometime between when I record this and when this episode goes up, I will never stop being pissed at you. Yes, a lot of people have been contacting me on Twitter and Tumblr, at Professor Thorgy, and asking me questions, which I love when you guys do that, but one question that keeps getting asked over and over again is, hey, I really enjoy superhero comics. I really enjoy the idea of a superhero universe with a bunch of books that connect. However, kind of getting a little bit tired of Marvel and a little bit tired of DC. I want something new. Is there another comic book company out there that has that shared superhero universe? Valiant. Valiant is the comic book company to go to. Valiant is a company that started up back in the 90s, and they had a bit of a success back then, but then they kind of died out. But about four years ago, they had a massive resurgence. They came back, relaunched their entire universe, and it has been critically acclaimed, and all the audiences that have been picking those books up have been loving it. I'll admit, the people who read Valiant, their numbers might not be that big, however, they are dedicated. You run into anybody who has been reading the new Valiant stuff, they will be more than happy to tell you how freaking good it is. And I've been reading the new Valiant stuff, and I'm gonna tell you how freaking good it is. However, jumping right into a brand new comic book universe can always be a little bit confusing, so today on Comic Class, I am going to give you five books that started just a couple years ago, back when they relaunched all their titles, and you can go out and pick up the first trade of each of these books for only $10. That's an amazing deal, and I'm going to explain to you the premise of each of these books and how they connect into the rest of the Valiant universe. Marvel, seriously, does this have something to do with the mutants? You got Cullen Bunn's name all over it. M.U., is that like mutant universe? Are you moving them to a separate, you know, not talking about, not talking about today, not talking about today. Valiant, baby! Okay, as I said, I picked five books to talk about today, and the reason why I chose these specific five books is for two reasons. The first one is because these books were there when Valiant started their relaunch, so you don't really need to know anything to jump into them. Every single one of them starts as their own unique thing, and if you want to know what's going on in the current Valiant universe, many of the big titles and characters out there kind of sprung out of these original books. So this would be a great jumping on point for anybody who wants to discover this entire universe. And the other reason why I chose these five is because every single one of them is very different from the others. That's one of the things I love about Valiant. They might not have that many titles out there, but every single one of them is super unique. They have got big dramas, they've got history books, they've got time travel books, they've got wacky comedies, they've got wacky conspiracy comedies, they've got flat out superhero books. Valiant really is pointing out there a great variety of books, so let's go ahead and jump into them. Now the first book that I'm going to talk about is one of my personal favorites from this relaunch, Harbinger. Now Harbinger focuses on Peter Stanchek, who is what in the Valiant universe is called a Psyot, which I'm not gonna lie to you guys, is basically mutants, except it deals specifically with psychic powers. It's basically people who were born with latent psychic abilities. However, those psychic abilities can manifest themselves in numerous ways. There are people who can use their psychic abilities to create fire. There are people who can use it to make themselves stronger. There are people who can use it to make themselves fly. And Peter's powers are telekinesis and telepathy. In fact, he is one of the most powerful psyots on the planet. And when this book actually begins, he doesn't know how to control these powers, so they're actually a huge burden to him. He can't not hear the thoughts of everyone around him. So when this book begins, he's actually in a very, very dark place. He is homeless, wandering around, just stealing drugs from pharmacies just so that he can get through the day. Yeah, this book does not start off in a happy place, but stick with me. But one day, a man by the name of Toyo Harada, who is basically the world's most wealthy humanitarian, reaches out to Peter and says, listen, I'm also a Psyot. I'm also incredibly powerful and it was very hard for me to learn how to control my powers, but I also secretly have a school for Psyots and I'm going to train you to, okay, listen, yes, it's basically Professor X reaching out to Cyclops. I will admit there are similarities here to the X-Men. However, this is where the similarities stop because Peter goes to the school, he starts training with the other Psyots and he slowly learns, oh, you're not Professor X, you're Magneto. 
You are training all these Psyops to try and take over the world. All this humanitarian stuff you do, that's just a front. That's just a cover. You are secretly trying to raise up an army to take over the entire world. And Peter, who discovers that he can actually use his telepathy to unlock the Psyop powers of other people, grabs a list of all the reject Psyops. All the people who weren't good enough to go to the big fancy Toyo Harada school, and now him and Faith, who is a giant superhero junkie and has the power to fly and basically has won nothing more than to be a superhero, the two of them set out and travel across the entire country to try and find all these other psyops. And as the series went along, they kept adding new cast members to their team, and as that team grew, this eventually became one of the best team books out there for a couple of reasons. The first one is because there is a huge variety to this cast. As I said, Peter starts off very dark and down and depressed and understandable when you see what he's going through, but then you have Faith over there who loves the idea of being a superhero. She is the massive ray of sunlight that just encompasses this entire series because when everything is down and everyone's like, oh God, I don't know what we can do. She's the one that steps up and goes, we're gonna be superheroes because it's what we freaking do. And you look at that and go, yeah, be superheroes. Like she is full of so much enthusiasm that you just want to cheer her on on every page. But you also have characters in there like Chris and Chris is the only member of the team who isn't a side. She was a childhood friend of Peter's and Peter always had a crush on her. And I will be totally honest with you guys, in the first story arc, Peter does something with Chris that's next to unforgivable, but I didn't look at like, oh, this is terrible, I'm throwing this away. I looked at like, wow, these are really kind of complex characters who are just really messed up. And it actually kind of adds dimensions to them. But after Peter does it, he then immediately realizes, oh shoot, this was horrible. I'm a monster for doing this. And throughout the series, he and Chris kind of work this out and talk it through and it's actually handled pretty darn well. But also, Chris realizes this group of superheroes, they have to go out there and stop Toyo. So I'm the brains of this organization. I'm the smart one here. I'm the one who knows exactly what to do with this team. I'm the strategist and it is great seeing her, someone without any powers, going out there and being just as much a part of this team as any of them. She adds such a great dimension to this team. And then there's also characters out there like Torque. Torque is this kid who he had muscular dystrophy so he could never move out of bed. So he just spent his entire life sitting in bed watching reality TV shows every single day. His powers is that he can create a cocoon around his body that takes the form of a giant muscle man. So this kid who never had any muscles that he could use now has all the muscles that he can use. And as I said, he grew up watching reality TV. So he's kind of stupid. He kind of wants nothing more than to be that guy who goes to the Jersey Shore and just parties at all times. But again, seeing him in this team, he adds a completely different dimension to the team. He is a completely different type of character and watching all these very different characters bounce off each other, it creates great dynamics. But the other reason why I say that this is one of the best team books out there is because to me, a team book works best when it's not just a bunch of heroes going out there on a mission. A team book works best when that team is a family. And that's what this team ends up becoming. It's a bunch of really screwed up people who all come together to find one another and they find something special in each other. Next book I'm going to talk about is Exo Manowar. Now this is probably Valiant's biggest character. He's probably the most well-known character at Valiant. In fact, back in the 90s when Valiant was around the first time, I wasn't reading any of their books, but I was reading a bunch of Marvel books. I remember picking up a video game Iron Man and Exo Man of War. They actually had a crossover video game. I had no idea who Exo Man of War was, but that's who I, how I found out about him. So that's how big Exo Man of War is over at Valiant. They actually went, we gotta make a video game. This is the guy we're going to pick. And Marvel was like, hey, this Exo Man of War guy is pretty big. Maybe we should make this video game with them. So it was like, that's how much of an iconic character he is for their universe. And who he is, is he is basically Conan the Barbarian in space with an Iron Man suit. It stars this Viking Barbarian character named Eric, who was the greatest warrior of his people, the Visigoth people, who existed in the 5th century of Europe. 
But then they were all abducted by an alien race called the Vine, and they were all sentenced to work. And the aliens, they all worship this little tiny device that formed into a suit. However, any of the aliens that tried to put the suit on, it instantly killed them. And one day, Eric decides, screw it, I'm done. I'm a warrior, I am not a slave, I'm gonna rise up, and he fights back against the aliens, and the aliens are kinda kicking their ass until he touches the suit, the suit bonds to him, and it works on him. It killed all the aliens that tried to touch it. He's the one guy that made it work. He was the chosen one. So he just starts taking out all the aliens. He steers the ship back to Earth, brings his people back to Earth, and discovers uh, about 1,500 years have passed. Yes, Eric arrives back, and it's now the modern day. So now, not only is he a barbarian with a space suit on that makes him the most powerful warrior in the universe, he's also a man out of time. Everything he knew and loved was gone. So it's a very interesting character in a very interesting situation. And I highly recommend this series to anybody out there who is really big into like space fantasy. Like anybody who wants really big crazy sci-fi, but also wants a little bit of battle in there, some kind of you know, fantasy style ass kicking in there. That's what Exo Man War is for. But also, if you just want to know more about the Valiant universe, the Vine comes back and plays a large role throughout the rest of Valiant. You've seen many other heroes face them before. The character of Ninjak, who ended up becoming a big character later on in the Valiant comics, he started off in Exo Man War. So this book did actually end up sprouting out into numerous other titles. Sprouting is not the correct word. Branching! I knew it had something to do with plants. Now the first two books that I talked about were a little bit more on the serious side. And this next book I'm going to talk about is probably Valiant's most serious book. But then after that are the fun books, are the comedic books. So just hang tight with me for one more book. But I gotta get this one out of the way while I'm talking about the serious titles. Bloodshot. Bloodshot is all about a soldier who's been going out on secret missions for the United States government. And he's been injected with nanites that can heal him back from pretty much anything. I mean, this guy's healing factor makes Wolverines look like nothing. But he's been doing this for several years, and it's been going just fine, until suddenly one day he realizes, uh, the people who I think are my family are not actually my family. Uh, this secret idea that I have, that person doesn't actually exist. All my memories are fake. The government's been lying to me. Who am I? Why have they been using me like this? And he basically goes out there on a search for answers and revenge. Now, this is a title that I recommend to anybody who comes into my store and says, hey man, I'm a big fan of Punisher, I'm a big fan of Wolverine, what can you give me like that? Bloodshot. Bloodshot is the book that I recommend. And I know that the way I'm describing this kind of makes it sound like it's just mindless violence. It's not. It's actually really well written mindless violence. Okay, I'll admit to that. However, it goes on from there as he goes on this quest of discovery and eventually the series ended. But it came back being written by Jeff Lemire, and Jeff Lemire made this one of the most complex characters with some of the craziest stories that I have read in any superhero comic in years. Jeff Lemire is doing an amazing job on that book. However, I'm not talking about that. That comes after a long series of events. Right now, I'm just talking about those first couple of books that came out, the ones that started this big relaunch. And I gotta say, yeah, it's a lot more kind of mindless violence, but it was pretty darn good mindless violence. It was actually well written. It was actually clever. You actually did care about this character. It wasn't just watching a guy with a giant red circle on his chest going around blowing people up. No, you actually cared about the dude going around blowing people up with a giant red circle on his chest. You wanted to see what happened to him. You wanted to find out the answers with him. They did a great job of capturing that. And as I said, I'm recommending many of these books. A, because they have a wide variety to them, and no other book from Valiant was quite like Bloodshot, but also because many of these books did end up leading into other things in the Valiant universe, and Bloodshot is a character who came back over and over and over again. As I said, I compared him a couple times to Wolverine. They kind of treat him the way that Marvel treats Wolverine, which is put him in a book, put him in all the books, put him in all the books. So yeah, he is a character who has been popping up numerous times, and as I said, even if you don't really enjoy the first thing that you read from him, as long as you know who he is, I would still recommend just skipping ahead to the Jeff Lemire stuff because that actually is really good on a whole other level. It is actually a really smart book once he takes it over. But okay, is everybody good in Serious Town? Everybody discovered all the serious books that they need? Everybody's drama bags filled up? Good, because it's time to laugh. This next book 
is, I am not exaggerating when I say this, one of the funniest books I've read in my entire comic book life. In fact, this book was such a great comedy series, it is one of the only Valiant books to ever be nominated for an Eisner. Quantum and Woody. This is a book about the world's worst superhero team. It's about two brothers. Eric, who was a straight A student who went into the military and graduated with honors, and then there's Woody, who dropped out of school early so that he could travel around the country being a con man. Yeah, this guy, all honor, this guy, all sleaze. So these two have been separated for years and cannot bring themselves to talk to each other. However, all that changes when their scientist father is mysteriously killed. This brings the two of them together and they can't go five seconds without trying to beat the crap out of each other at his funeral. That's how dysfunctional their relationship is. But they decide that for their dad, they're going to team up and go and try and investigate what happened to him. Try and discover who killed their dad. They sneak into his lab one night and then suddenly his machine comes to life, starts whirling up and there's a giant explosion and they are just doused in this strange light and when the light fades, they now have superpowers. However, if they don't touch each other at least once every 24 hours, they explode. This book had a great balance between comedy and heart. It was really touching and so good to see these two characters come back together and try to be a family again, but it was even better watching how it always got screwed up. This whole series was just a string of unfortunate events. It was nothing but Eric trying his hardest, Woody constantly screwing it up. And you'd think constantly seeing that happen is the kind of thing that would eventually get old, but to me it never did, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that this book is so darn clever. All the weird situations that they constantly found themselves in just kept me laughing all throughout, and every single comeback that a character has to another character is some of the wittiest dialogue I have read in any book. If you want a series that is just there to make you laugh, I highly recommend Quantum and Woody. So yes, when it comes to comedy, Quantum and Woody is Valiant's most humorous book. However, they have another comedy series out there that, yeah, the humor in Quantum and Woody might be a little bit better in my personal opinion. However, the creativity in the story of this other book surpasses almost anything else at Valiant. This is one of the most creative titles they have, Archer and Armstrong. Okay, now Quantum and Woody might be an unlikely pair of heroes. However, Archer and Armstrong takes the cake in that department because this is a series all about Obadiah Archer, who is this kid who grew up on a creationist theme park with his 20 some odd other brothers and sisters and they were raised by two super devout parents who raised them to always be polite and to never say curse words and to never drink and always be on the straight and narrow and also to be deadly assassins because they wanted to train each of these kids to go out there and take on this great evil immortal being and Obadiah is the one who proved himself to be the greatest fighter out of any of them so he's the one who won the right to go out there into the world and slay this evil being. He hunts this evil being down Turns out the evil being is this guy Armstrong, who is an immortal drunk poet. Yes, you see, Armstrong and his two brothers, who I will get to in a moment, are all immortal. They have existed for tens of thousands of years and can heal back from anything. But here's the thing. Whereas his brothers went out there with special missions of their own, Armstrong decided that he was going to spend his immortality writing poetry, singing songs, partying, drinking, picking up women, he is basically the world's biggest lech and party animal. And so Obadiah faces off with Armstrong, and when Armstrong discovers what he's there for, he goes, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, I'm sorry. You think I'm the ultimate evil? Hold up a second. Let me show you some stuff about your parents. And Obadiah then discovers his parents are actually trying to take over the world. They are part of a strange cult that is just trying to erase all of existence. Part of numerous other cults out there, they're all fighting for control of the entire planet. And they sent Obadiah to kill Armstrong because he's pretty much the only one who can stop him. So now you have Archer, who is this kid who has never said a swear word, can't bring himself to do it, can't bring himself to have a drink 
who is now paired up and going out on adventures with a guy who has never stopped having drinks and swearing. And so the two of them are going out across the entire world fighting different cults and sects and government organizations. I want to make it very clear I said sect. S-E-C-T. I have a slight list. I want to make it very clear that I didn't say something else there. But they're going out there fighting different weird conspiratorial organizations and this book is basically, imagine every single urban legend and conspiracy theory you've ever heard of. All being real and they're all groups trying to take over the world and these two idiots are the ones who have to stop them. It is such a creative book. Here's an example of the kind of thing that I'm talking about. There is a moment in which they go to Los Angeles and they find this hotel that is basically a labyrinth and the souls of all these dead celebrities are existing in there. And after I read, I realized, oh my god, this is Hotel California. This is the thing that the Eagles were singing about. That weird hotel that you can never leave. That's what this was. That's how smart this book is. So yeah, I know that I spotlighted a lot of books today that I really enjoyed. But whenever I stop and actually think about it, I gotta say, I think Archer and Armstrong might be my favorite series from Valiant. I constantly go back and forth between that, Quam and Woody, and Harbinger. But I think that the creativity mixed with the humor and heart of Archer and Armstrong is what constantly brings me back to it. So if you want to check out a really unique title, then check out Archer and Armstrong. But also, if you just want to know about the rest of the Valiant universe, like I said, Exo Man War, Bloodshot, they branch out into a bunch of stuff. Harbinger, it branches out into different things. Toyo Hara, he's been out there doing his own thing. Faith, who starred in that book, she has her own title that is amazing. I have spotlighted that series before. But oddly enough, Archer and Armstrong is probably the book that branches out into the most other Valiant books. As I said, Armstrong has two other brothers, Ivar, who time travels, and if you are a fan of Doctor Who, you need to read Ivar Time Walker. That was an amazing series that was basically like, hey, what if we did Doctor Who, but did a little bit more realistic, and they actually go into some really messed up sides of time travel, and again, super creative. But also, his other brother ended up becoming known as the Eternal Warrior, and that is Valiant's biggest character. That's the guy who Valiant keeps playing in the most titles. But also, many other elements of that series just keep popping up in other books. Like the Geomancer, the idea of someone who is connected to the Earth. That is something that has popped up in numerous Valiant books, started in Archer and Armstrong. It is stunning to me how a book that was just a comedic series about a drunk and some kid with a bow and arrow ended up becoming one of the most important books to the entire Valiant universe. But hey man, it did, and I'm glad that it did because it was so darn good. In fact, that series, it ended at issue number 25, but then it took about a year off, and now it's come back with a brand new series called A Plus A, short for Archer and Armstrong. It's good. It's still freaking good. I am still having a blast with it. It's written by a completely different person and is way more humorous than the previous one. But if you read this series and you enjoy it, I highly recommend you keep reading it in this new incarnation. The new Archer and Armstrong series, still really darn good. But there you go, everyone. As I said, I've been wanting to talk about Valiant Comics for a long time. And I'm glad that we finally got a week where nothing was happening, so I had the opportunity to do it. Not gonna think about this. Not gonna think about this. But if you have checked out any of these series or any other Valiant series, let me know your thoughts on them in the comments below, or you can always contact me on Twitter and Tumblr at Professor Thorby. Also, if you like this video, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button because we do fun, geeky stuff every single week on this channel. We got comic class every single Wednesday, but then we also cover video games and movies and television on the weekends. So if you want to check any of that stuff out, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support this channel, the best way to do that is just simply to share these videos around the web and make sure that you give us a thumb up. That makes it so much easier for people to find us. But for now, I'm just going to say thanks for watching, everyone. Come back next time. Bye.